Are you looking to improve the reproducibility and reliability of your data science and machine learning workflows and training jobs? Then you've got to try out AI Platform Pipelines. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufeng Guo, and on this episode, we're going to explore how to set up AI platform pipelines to address your MLOps needs. MLOps is all the rage these days, a combination of machine learning and operations. It applies many DevOps best practices to the machine learning ecosystem. We often hear about how important it is to have a well-running continuous integration and deployment pipeline for software development. So as your machine learning setup matures, you should begin to incorporate these best practices as well. AI Platform Pipelines allows you to orchestrate your machine learning workflows as reproducible and reusable pipelines. Specifically, it handles the process of setting up Kubeflow pipelines with TensorFlow Extended on Google Kubernetes engine. Let's talk a little more about each of these terms. Kubeflow is an open source toolkit for running machine learning workflows on Kubernetes. Kubeflow Pipelines is a component of Kubeflow that provides a platform for building and deploying ML workflows called pipelines structured as directed acyclic graphs. TensorFlow Extended, or TFX, is also an open source project which you can use to define your TensorFlow-based machine learning workflows as a pipeline. TFX provides a pipeline template that includes components you can reuse to ingest and transform data, train and evaluate a model, deploy a trained model for inference, and so on. By reusing TFX components, you can orchestrate your machine learning process without the need to build custom components for every single step. Setting up AI platform pipelines is quite easy. The team has worked hard to make this step as simple as possible, especially for those who are not familiar with Kubernetes or DevOps. There's a dedicated dashboard for our pipelines in the AI platform menu in Cloud Console. From there, we can deploy a new pipeline. This button will actually take us to the Cloud Marketplace, which is the same place we get our deep learning VM images. After we click Launch, we are presented with a configuration page, which has two sections. First, we need to either create a Kubernetes cluster or select an existing cluster. Notice that this is zone specific. If you're creating a new cluster, be sure to check the box to allow access to cloud APIs. This action grants the cluster access to your project and saves you the effort of creating and managing a service account or creating a Kubernetes secret. Once that's all set, click Create Cluster, and then wait while the cluster is created. During this time, the necessary VMs will be provisioned, the Kubernetes cluster will be created, and the Kubernetes software is installed. What I really like about this process is that Kubernetes has been abstracted away and automated. Once your cluster is created, all we need to do is give our pipelines instance a name and click Deploy. Now we wait some more while the Kubeflow pipeline software is installed. Once Pipelines is deployed to your cluster, you end up mostly working in the Pipelines dashboard UI. The Pipelines dashboard uses a left-hand navigation bar with a number of different categories, beginning with Getting Started, which contains a handful of useful demos and tutorials with examples of both TFX and Kubeflow pipelines. Next up is the Pipelines menu, the main event, and the reason we're here. We can see a list of all our pipelines. The setup process deployed a few demo and tutorial pipelines to the cluster, so you can get started right away. Let's start by running the data passing pipeline by clicking on its name and the Create Run button. We can include it in an experiment or just leave the field blank to associate it with the default experiment, which acts as a catch-all. Notice that this pipeline has no parameters, so we can click Start without entering any additional fields. Now we have a pipeline running. Notice the dashboard is now showing us the list of runs in the Experiments tab. Let's click on our run and see it in progress. Notice the graph will animate each component in the pipeline as it runs. After a little while, the job is finished, and the green check replaces that timer icon. Pipelines are like templates. They define what needs to be run, but don't represent the actual execution of code. That's what runs are for. You must run a pipeline in order to get any output. 
Each time you run a pipeline, a new set of outputs are produced. These runs are single executions of a pipeline, and individual runs are associated together into an experiment. You can name your experiments whatever you want, and you're not constrained to having the same type of pipeline runs in one experiment. So you can include different types of pipelines in the same experiment if you want to. Running pipelines can output artifacts. These artifacts are viewed by drilling down into an individual run or by clicking the Artifacts tab in the left-hand menu. Kubeflow Pipelines supports the following output viewers currently. Confusion Matrix, Markdown, ROC Curve, Table, TensorBoard, and even a web app if you really want to get fancy. Now, you might be thinking, this pipelines thing sounds really awesome, but how do I create my own pipeline? At the end of the day, we have two different ways to make pipelines. AI Platform Pipelines supports both the TFX SDK and the Kubeflow Pipelines SDK. How do we choose which one to use? Well, if you're working with TensorFlow, use TFX. It's designed for TensorFlow and will make your TensorFlow code run seamlessly. Otherwise, use Kubeflow Pipelines. It's designed for any arbitrary library, so you can run everything from your scikit-learn models to PyTorch in your pipeline. TFX has the advantage of more pre-built components and is a more opinionated approach, while Kubeflow Pipelines is more open-ended and allows you to design your own pipeline components from scratch. We'll be looking at more details on how to use these two SDKs in future episodes of AI Adventures. But for now, I've linked to two longer videos exploring AI platform pipelines in more detail in the description below. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. If you enjoyed it, click that like button and subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. I'm Yufeng Guo on Twitter at YufengG. And if you're looking for longer form machine learning and cloud content, be sure to check out the Adventures in the Cloud YouTube channel, which I've linked below in the description. For now, try setting up your very own pipeline on GKE using AI platform pipelines on Google Cloud Platform.